All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get into the, uh, the, the training part of our call. And uh, I'm going to hand the mic over to uh, Jimmy so uh, he can walk through what he has to share with us today. Jimmy, the floor is yours, my friend. Thank you, Joe. Well, guys, uh, we're going to cover how to crack the code. And what code am I talking about? I'm talking about the, the sales code uh, to your to your client or prospect, you know, uh, cracking the code to, to making the sale and influencing your prospects. So, you know, if you think about it, and I, and, I, and I really like this picture, right, because the guy is having to listen for the clicks, right? Think about it like uh, unlocking the safe. He's got to really pay attention and listen as he's rotating. And that's what we have to do. We have to listen to our clients. And so uh, before we go into learning how to crack that code and overcome objections, I do want to I do want to say a couple of things that, you, you, you know, you need to have in place before you handle objections. And the first thing we're going to start with is making a good first impression. I cannot elaborate or expand on this enough. You know, when you first meet your prospect, they're going to judge you. And, and the experts say that within the first four to five seconds, they already determined if they like you, if they're going to do business with you just off that initial impression. Now, if you have a horrible first impression, they're definitely not going to do business with you, you know, but you, you want to, you want to, first off, there's three components of that. One, you want to look sharp as a tack. I'm not saying you have to wear a suit for final expense, but you want to be pressed and neat. You want to, you want to be dressed sharp. You want your your hair and your beard or you know you 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 want everything to be trim and proper you want to look good uh you want the second thing is you want to be enthusiastic you know the enthusiasm sells so you make sure you have enthusiasm in your in your in your tonality and your speech and lastly there you want to be an expert in your field nobody wants to do business with somebody that's stumbling through stuff and is uncertain about what they're doing or not sure so you have to be an expert now if you're new that just means you have to act like an expert and learn very rapidly okay so you want to become an expert you but you want to talk about things with confidence the second component i want to talk about real quick is that you want to make sure you do a good warm-up okay you want to build rapport with your client. And we have a couple of tools that will help you do that. One is your pre-sell folder. So that kind of helps build rapport. It also helps build value in the company and senior solutions and in the product that you're offering from a you know, general uh, conceptual point. Uh, the third thing you want to do in the warm up is you want to find their pain. So you don't wanna like expand on it too much in the beginning, but you wanna identify what is their pain. And that's what we teach in the magic formula is you wanna ask why did they fill out the card and mail it in? So that's where you identify the pain, okay? Then you're gonna go on to the presentation. Now in the presentation, use our flip chart presentation and use the script from the magic formula. Guys, let me just tell you this is that our presentation is really designed to address all of the normal concerns that people have when making a final expense purchase and raising their level of certainty. And so if you're if you're doing the presentation properly, you're going to overcome the majority of the objections just by doing that. OK, so incorporate that. Um, then you're going to move into the three option quote, right, which Joe showed you a little while ago. And you're going to, you know, give them the three options and you're going to assume the sell. So that's going to be your first close. Uh, I simply say, you know, which one of these makes the most sense for you. They will normally give me one, two or three, whichever one they select. I just assume the sell and I'll say, great. I go ahead and ask them the next question. I already have the application out and I'm asking them, who's your beneficiary going to be? And I just start filling out the application. 
Okay, so assume the cell. Now, this is where the training begins. Okay, so if they uh, don't, you know, I guess you can say proceed and they're starting to put on the brakes, so they're going to give you an objection. This is what we're going to concentrate on today. And so before, before we concentrate on that, I want to cover the five core elements of uh, the straight line system. So, Joe, if you could go to the next slide. Oh, it's can you rotate that, Joe? If, if yeah. not, <laughs> if not, we'll go. I'll just talk about it. So remember, we talked about the safe, right? And here there's five areas in every cell that you need to get the combination to move forward to the next area. And 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 uh, I'm going to cover this. So the numbers that you see there and this would normally be uh, with the eight on the right and then the other eight on the left. So it'd be, you know, uh, the numbers on top. But so let's say uh, you want to cover the, the five core elements. And so the first one is, is the pro the prospect must love your product. And so um, if they don't love your product, there's no need to move on. The second one you need to talk about or, or you need to address is that the prospect prospect must trust and connect with you. Thirdly, they must trust and connect with your company. That would be senior solutions slash which carrier you have selected for them. The fourth one is you have to lower the action threshold and five, you need to raise the pain threshold. And so there's basically two types of certainty that every prospect um, is dealing with before they make the decision to move forward. And the first one is logical certainty. And that's basically what we're doing in our presentation. And, and the logical certainty means this, does this product truly fill their needs? Is it priced fairly when they're compared to the competition? Does the cost slash benefit ratio uh, make it an unequivocally great deal. So that's the first area you need to address. So Joe, if you could go on to the next slide. So there you go. So product. So we want to make sure that, you know, you're uncracking the code. Now, the reason for the number there on top, and I'm going to elaborate on this just briefly, Let's say you had a, a, a scale from one to 10 and this certainty scale, number one is uh, not certain at all. And what you're talking about there is someone that their certainty, certainty level would be something like this. If you would ask them what their certainty level is for this product, they'd say, uh, no, this doesn't make sense. Uh, I wouldn't buy this you know, if, if uh, hell fr froze over, you know, there's there's no doubt in their mind that they don't want this product. That would be a number one, right? On the other end of the spectrum, a number 10 would be they love it. And, and you can tell by reading their body language and, and watching their facial expressions, they're like, yeah, this is the greatest thing sl since sliced bread. I, this absolutely is what we're looking for. That's a 10, right? So, most of the time when you're faced with an objection, they're somewhere in the middle. Maybe they're at a five, maybe they're a six, and you can tell by the way they respond when you go for the close and when you go for a, a question, I'm gonna teach you to ask here in a second, right? So everybody's, um, I guess you can say threshold is different as far as what they need that number to be to make, a, to make a decision to move forward. And so if, if, and you don't know what that code is yet, right? So you're trying to crack the code, but I'm just gonna tell you this, that normally you want that number to be an eight, nine or 10. So you want, you want them to be absolutely certain that this product truly fits their needs, that it's priced 
fairly, right? It's better than the competition and it meets their budget, right? I mean, those are things that, you know, you need in that first that first one, that first section, right? So Joe, go ahead and, and, and switch on to the next thing there. So I want you to imagine the cell like this, like a straight line. And you can start from the left there where it says open. That's when you first greet your customers. So when you first start talking to them and you're warming up, that's the beginning of the cell. And at the very end on the right, that's the close. That's when you made your cell. They made their decision to move forward. And everything in the middle has to do with presentation, right? So every cell works the same way. You want to move them down that straight line from open to close. Now, every customer is different because that's that combination part. You're trying to unlock their particular code to move forward. Now, I hope this doesn't sound too complicated. I'm going to make it real simple for you here in a second. But the second level of certainty is emotional certainty. And this has to do with painting a picture for your prospect where they can see themselves benefiting from this product as if they already made it. So you got to use words and phrases that implies that how they would feel after they already made that purchase right so in our in our line of business is usually is going to be um a sense of peace uh they call it peace of mind they feel like okay i've taken care of my family so that's going to be the emotional component now i want to talk about objections so at the end of the day objections are really they're just a for uncertainty. That's all they are. And, and, and this is what I have to tell you about objections. If you try to handle the, 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 the dreaded, I want to think it over objection by saying something like, well, you know, what part about the offer is it that you want to think over? And that's, that's what you normally see in sales books, right? That's what I've been trained on, you know, since I was 15 years old. The problem with that is that when you try to address it, you're not really addressing the real issue. The real issue is that they're uncertain, right? And so they're either uncertain about the product, they're uncertain about you, or they're uncertain about the company. So again, at the end of the day, those are just smoke screens. And I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you hear, uh, I want to think about it, or it's a bad time of the year. Uh, maybe they say, you know, uh, I want to talk to my wife. I need to talk to my children. We've all heard these objections. And so whenever someone's telling you that, what you got to understand is that they're trying to let you off in a non-confrontational way. See, it's a lot easier for them to say, I need to talk to my spouse before I make a decision than for them to come back and say, you know what, Joe, I don't trust you. Um, I think your product stinks or I don't like your company or I can't afford it right now or your product seems great, but I'm not 100 percent, you know, uh, certain. So basically what they're doing is they're just kind of letting you off the hook. And so to avoid the possibility of a head on confrontation, they're going to make up this little white lie. It's a special lie, a lie that gives you just enough false hope to make them think that there's a shot of getting a call back. And by the end of the, you know, and by ending it now without pressing the, pros the pro uh, prospect further, you're going to go ahead and just, you know, hope for a be back and, and I'm just telling you that's not going to happen how many times have you had that and then you you call to follow up and then they blow you off or you know they just outright tell you they decided to do something else so uh they all want to think about it um you know let me see here I want to look at I got I'm sorry I lost I lost track of my notes um okay so Let's let's go ahead and address that. They say, Jimmy, you know what? I want to think about it. Uh, you know, I'm not 100 percent certain. Uh, I need to talk to my wife. You know, here's what you say every time. It doesn't matter what the response is. You're going to say, I hear what you're saying, Bill, 
But let me ask you a question. Does the idea make sense to you? Do you like the idea? And that's all you have to say. So it doesn't matter what the objection is. You're going to say the same thing every time. I hear what you're saying, Bill, but let me ask you a question. Does this idea make sense to you? Do you like the idea? Okay. And then wait for a response and particularly pay attention to how they respond. Okay. So they're going to respond anywhere from a one to a 10, right? On, on the certainty scale, if, if uh, they're like, well, you know, it seems like it's okay. You know, look, it looks decent. Uh, then you know that you really need to work on that product, right? They're not 100% convinced. So your response is going to be exactly, it really is a great value. In fact, you know, one of the true beauties here, Bill, and then you're going to go right back into the body of your presentation. So, you, Joe, if you can go to the next slide. And you see that little loop, you get the objection and then you're going to loop back into your presentation. OK, so I, I just kind of want to say this one more time. So they say, yeah, it's you know, it, it looks good. It's it, you know, it's decent. You can say exactly. It really is a great value. In fact, one of the true beauties here is and then you're going to say something that's going to loop you back into the presentation. And you might say something like one of the true beauties here is, is that this policy without any extra uh, cost to you has built in a rider that covers you if you ever get diagnosed with a terminal illness that allows you to accelerate the death benefit. And then you just move on from there. Or it could be you talk about the nursing home. But you're going to you're going to kind of have to figure out what's going to work for you. But you want to loop back into the presentation and start, you know, building more value. OK, um, once you feel like, you know, you covered some some of the, the bullet points or, you know, the hot buttons, then you're going to go back and you're going to say. You see what I'm saying here, Bill, do you like the idea? So now you're kind of like, you're not really asking for the clothes. You're just trying to confirm that they do like the idea. And you really don't want to move forward until you feel like their response is somewhere about an eight on that scale of certainty, right? So you want to build the value. You want to re-ask. You see what I'm saying here, Bill? Do you really like the idea? And just wait for the answer. Now, when they respond in an enthusiastic tone, uh, they, they give you the idea that they love it. It makes sense to them. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to move on. You're not going to ask for the clothes. You're going to say exactly. Now, Bill, let me ask you another question. And then, Joe, if you can switch to the next slide. Now you're going to move on to the you. You want to you want to build certainty in yourself. And the way I want to kind of elaborate on this is how many of y'all have ever seen Forrest Gump, the movie? Do you remember when uh, little Forrest at the beginning of the movie, he's waiting at the bus stop to go to school, right? It's his first day of school. And uh, the, the, the bus driver pulls over and she opens the door and she's sitting there and she's looking at him and he just kind of looks at her and he doesn't want to move forward. And, and uh, she goes, well, come on, you know, come on, get in the bus. And he's like, well, mama said not to take rides from strangers, right? And and then uh, she looks at him and he looks at her and she goes, you know, uh, this is the school bus, right? And he's just thinking about it. And, and little Forrest, he's just, you know, trying to figure out how to solve this problem because his mama told him not to take rides from strangers. And so what Forrest basically does is he introduces himself to her and he says, well, my name is Forrest Gump. And he puts out his hand to shake her to shake her hand. And she shakes his hand. She says, my name is Dorothy Harris. And he says, well, I guess we're not strangers anymore. And he hops on the bus. Right. If you kind of picture that, that's what this next step is going to do. So 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 again, you're going to 
you're going to say exactly bill let me ask you another question and then you're going to move into you know uh, a tonality that is kind of more like you know putting the money aside um kind of like a uh, nonchalant you're not trying to be enthusiastic here you're not trying to be high pressure just kind of like casually a matter of factly um if I had been your insurance agent for the last three to four years, right, and I came back in and, you know, I presented this offer to you, you'd probably be a lot more comfortable at moving forward, wouldn't you? And they'd probably say, yeah. And then you say something to the fact, well, you know, I just want to reintroduce myself. I understand how you feel. And you put out your hand and say, look, my name is Jimmy Hernandez. And I'm a licensed agent with Senior Solutions, and I represent this company, which is the carrier you selected for them, right? And then you're going to say, I pride myself on, and then you're going to come up with something that works for you, but you're going to say this every time. And then you're going to tell them a little bit about yourself. So some of the things you could pride yourself on is integrity, ethics. You can pride yourself on that you're really big on customer service. Um, you can pride yourself on that you're very knowledgeable, that, you know, you do the right thing for the clients. Um, but what whatever that is, you're going to say it every time. And then you're going to say, and as far as my company goes, and then you're going to talk a little bit about your company and you're going to build some um value in senior solutions and then build value in the carrier so you can say something to the effect you know and as far as my company goes senior solutions has been in business for 10 years now and we specialize in working with people between the ages of 50 and 85 and so these products are designed to help families just like you to put their minds at ease, to protect their family. They don't have any worries about their costs going up or about the you know, policy expiring. These are things that we specialize in. And then this company, Mutual of Omaha or Transamerica, whatever company you've des you know, designated is gonna be the best fit for them, you can say some great things about that company as well. And I like to talk about things like exclusively uh, I'm not saying it's exclusive to that company, but I try to put in a, in a, in a tone that makes it sound like it's exclusive, like the nursing home writer, or maybe the accidental death writer, or maybe the, uh, you know, children's writer, what, it, whatever you want to build value on, you build that value in the com in, in the uh, company. So third, third slide, or go to the next slide, Joe. All right, great. So see now how you're now you're hitting the certainty levels for everything. You're hitting for the product, for you. And now you're addressing the company, and then you're going to transition into your close, um, and 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 then go for the close for the second time. So one thing you should definitely consider here is try to step down to a smaller number as well, right? So. You know, maybe they went with, you know, option A, which was the highest one, which was 20,000 as an example. Maybe you want to go ahead and back down to the 15. Um, on an average, 20% of your prospects that gave you the objection up front are going to go ahead and close now on your second close. So you want to go ahead and go ahead and close again. And then if they don't go ahead and, and uh, I guess you can say go forward, then you need to work on one of the next two things. So Joe, if you go to the following slide, and you wanna, you wanna work on their action threshold. And so I just wanna kind of elaborate on, on what this means. And so um, some people, they don't need a lot of uh, uh, they don't need to have a high code to move forward. You know, maybe they see something right away. Maybe their action threshold is like, let's say, a five. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'll take action. And they move forward. Other people really, really 
don't have that action threshold. I mean, it's going to take a lot for them to make a move. So at this point, maybe you're you're facing somebody that has a threshold of a nine, as an example, right? So here's the thing I can tell you about this particular component is that it's malleable. Just because they're a nine doesn't mean that it cannot be lowered. And I'll give you a really good example. Let's say you have a car that is um, really, really special to you uh, and, and you don't want nobody to touch it except this one mechanic that you're in love with, right? And, and, and no matter what happens, whenever it needs a repair, nobody gets under that hood except your favorite mechanic. But let's say you're on a road trip with your family and maybe you know, you're out of town 200 miles away and all of a sudden your car's not starting. Well, guess what? Are you going to wait for that favorite uh, uh, mechanic to take a look at to take a look at your car? You know, it's not going to happen. You got your family with you. You're out of town. You need to take action immediately. Right. So your action threshold can vary. And so what you want to do, do some things to address this action threshold. And so what I can tell you about that is, is there's some things that you can say uh, to go ahead and, and, and bring this down. And so what you want to talk about is typically giving them a, I guess you can say like a, a way out, if you will. So the action threshold could be something like, uh, you know, why don't we go ahead and submit the application and you don't have to pay anything today. First, we need to make sure we get the approval from the carrier before you can even determine if you want this. So that could be one way of lowering the action threshold. Another way could be giving them uh, a guarantee that, look, if, if you do move forward with this and for some reason you change your mind, you know, you have a 30 day uh, uh uh, money back guarantee. You have a 30 day right to rescind, right? So, I mean, that's another way of lowering the action threshold. Um, and then the next one, let's go to uh, the next slide, Joe, is the pain threshold. So we talked about this in the beginning, you know, creating pain basically creates that emotional certainty that, that they need to move forward. And so maybe uh, you need to raise that pain level uh, up. Maybe they're sitting at a six and you need to get them to an eight so that they can move forward. So the best way to create pain is simply to imagine themselves in the situation where they passed away and they didn't have anything in place. And that's usually what I ask people. You know, so so Bill, let me ask you a question. You know, if you decided, you know, not to do anything today, God forbid, you know, down the road you decided. Uh, I mean, down maybe you intend down the road to take action, but then un, you know, unforeseen uh, something happens and you have a premature, unexpected death, and you didn't have anything in place. How is that going to affect your family? And then you just be quiet and you let them talk. And then you might expand on what what their answer is, you know, and, and a lot of times my clients tell me something like, well, my my fam my my daughter or my son, you know, they have their own family they're raising and they're, you know, paycheck to paycheck. They're struggling. They don't have savings. They wouldn't know how to figure it out and say exactly. So why would you want to put that off? You know, so so you're working on the pain. Um, then you're going to go ahead and go ahead and ask for the clothes. Now, at this point, I mean, I think most people are, that are going to buy, they're going to move forward, right? But, but let's say you you get still kind of some kind of resistance, but you can tell they're on the fence. They're not giving you a straight up, no, I don't want it. You know, this don't work for me. You know, they're kind of on the fence. They just need that little extra, you know, uh, confidence to, to go ahead and move forward, you know, so that you just got to go back and you want to loop back and you want to cover what area it is that you think that that they need help in. And so the big the biggest thing I want to say is you want to make sure 
that they know that you're sincere. You cannot do this in a high pressure way. You have to be totally sincere. They have to know that you care about them. And then you can go ahead and address the situation and move forward. Now, normally what happens at this point is that I'll go ahead and tell people, say, look, I know that you still want to think it over. This is what typically happens when people tell me that is they're busy. I'm busy. Uh, time goes by and they really don't ever get back to really, you know, put some thought into it. And then they just don't take action. It's not that they don't intend to or that they don't want to. And you've already told me how it's going to affect your family. You know, why don't we go ahead and move forward? I tell you what, Bill, let's go ahead and let's just start with something small. Let's let's do something really, really basic. And let's go with the minimum, which would be like maybe a five or ten thousand dollar face and bring it really low and then just ask for the order. Let's move on. And then you could always build and add to this later. Guys, if you do this, I'm telling you, you're going to have a very, very high closing rate. You just have to address those five areas. Joe, I don't think I have any other slides. Is that is that it right there? Well, uh, just this one that has it in this direction. Oh, OK. OK. So there's the there's the five. Uh, the grand finale. The grand finale. <laughs> so, again. You need to make sure that you're bringing, you're, you're cracking the code and you're bringing the level of certainty high. And you just have to assume that everybody's level of certainty is going to be an eight, you know, or higher to crack the code. If, if uh, you fall short, um, you're not going to get the sell. If you over exceed, well, you over exceeded and you crack the code and you're going to move forward. So, Joe, do you have any questions about this? um no i thought this was really good was this the the content that you're getting is it um a lot of it from the book that you're reading yes and that's that's what i wanted to kind of like uh, uh finish with is that this is called the straight line cell system and um if you guys had ever seen the movie which is uh the wolf on wall street that movie was about uh, a gentleman is a real life story and he basically wrote this book and his name is jordan um i think it's belfort let me see here and the name of the book is called the way of the wolf so uh yes jordan belfort way of the wolf and it's the straight line cell system and guys, I can tell you this, that this is just phenomenal. It really kind of like uh, changes the game because you're not tr trying to chase down the answer to every objection. You're treating every cell the same. You're just trying to raise the certainty either on the product, on yourself, on the company and the carrier, or you're trying to, you know, lower that action threshold and increase the pain threshold to make that client move forward. I can tell you this, that, you know, be backs, people that call you to come back and sell to them are few and far between. I, I get maybe two or three be backs a year. You know, if, if you don't close them on your initial presentation for final expense, you're, you're most likely not going to close them. So just kind of know that you want it while you're in front of them. Think about this, all the prospecting that we do, all the door knocking, all the calls. When you're finally there, belly to belly with your customer and you're making a presentation, you want to make sure that you do the best that you can do to close that sale right now. Now, here's what I can tell you, too, is that going back to the product, you know, threshold or, 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 or a combination if they're really, really low on a certain level and they're telling you, no, this ain't going to work, you know, th this is not what I want, you don't even need to move on or proceed because you're not going to overcome that. You know, think, think about it. You did everything right in the presentation. You thoroughly explained it. If you're not getting a, a, a middle or higher number uh, as far as enthusiastic response about the idea making sense to them, you're not going to make the sell. 
you know, overcoming objections, that's designed for those people that want to think it over, that want to talk to their family and truly, sincerely aren't certain. It's not designed for the people that are not going to buy. You, you, nobody's going to change that person. Um, one last thing I can tell you, too, is that, you know, the budget part of it, that has to make sense. That falls under the product. You know, you have to do a really good job of, of asking the right questions and working with your client during the presentation to determine the right number. So you want to kind of size them up properly and you want to give them three options. And that's why also backing down each time you close, bringing it to a lower number, just in case you over gauge that, you want to make sure that you get to that number. Uh, maybe they love your product. Maybe they love you. Maybe they love, you know, the company and Mutual of Omaha or whatever carrier choose, but maybe the budget is not right. So you really need to identify that in, in the first uh, uh, combination. So anyway, Joe, that's all I have for you. I don't know if you have any questions or comments on that. Well, no, I mean, the, the great material. Um I really like the way you you laid this out. The just the the one thing I guess I'll I'll add is that guys, there's a lot of things you can sell. Um, you know, there's you know you can sell houses, you can sell cars, you know, life insurance. Here here's what I can just tell you from my experience is that selling final expense life insurance is not a logical type of purchase. Okay, it it's not a features and benefits type product necessarily F selling final expense is an emotional type sell and the that pain threshold is that typically people do not buy final expense unless the pain level is high enough and i really like how you're focusing it on you know finding the pain um and then you could kind of substitute pain with uh with value as well you gotta you you know you have to to raise the value of what you're bringing to the table but at the same time the client if they're if you're not raising the pain level high enough they're not going to see the value those two really uh value and the pain really go um hand in hand and just one little tip i can give you especially for finding the pain is if you could just incorporate the words in your presentation in instead of getting in, instead of using words like well what do you think is just simply learn to substitute how does it make you feel it, it's a similar question but it causes the brain to act in a different way jimmy when i when i when we're talking and if i were to ask you a question it's like well jimmy what do you think so you're automatically go, going to go into the the logical side of your brain and start analyzing things. But when I ask you, Jimmy, how does this make you feel? It, it triggers a different response, guys. So just that one little switch could be something that you could make today that can change that. So, you know, if I'm talking to a client about final expense, you know, I might just ask you, if they don't have any life insurance, I'm like, wow, Jimmy, I know this is important to you. How does it make you feel not to have any coverage in place? He's going to tell you, man, I, I, I feel like crap. That's why I sent the form in. You know, you're raising that, you're raising the, the, um, the, the, the pain level or the awareness level. And then it's a matter of adding the, you know, the, um, the value. Um, so that's it, man. It was great. Uh, great training today, Jimmy. Thank really you, Joe. Good. Well, I hope I hope everybody liked it. Um, that's that's really all I have. <laughs> no, it was uh, it was very 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 good, man. Great stuff. All right, guys. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll get this. Uh, if you want to re-listen re-listen to this, we'll have it up on the uh, on the website um, early next week. All right, everybody. Take care. Thanks, Jimmy. It was a great webinar. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye, buddy. Take care.